Hi there, welcome to this upcoming video looking at phytomining and bioleaching. Modern mining techniques should be more environmentally friendly than some of the past techniques which were more industrial in nature. Let's start by looking at phytomining. So hopefully the word phyto is making you think of the term photosynthesis, and therefore this process involves using plants. The idea is we grow plants on top of low-grade copper ore on a slag heap, or maybe the soil around a mined area, and the plants absorb copper ions from the ground or from the ore via their root systems. The plants are hyperaccumulators. They're really good at absorbing a large number of ions from that soil slash ore. Next, we would harvest the plants, dry them out, and then burn them to produce ash. That ash would contain large amounts of accumulated copper compounds, which is what we want. Finally, we add some sulfuric acid, which reacts with the ash, more specifically with the copper compounds in the ash, forming copper sulfate. We then chuck in some recycled scrap iron, and the more reactive iron will displace the copper from the copper sulfate solution to form pure copper. This is actually an example of a redox, or an oxidation and reduction reaction, because when the iron reacts with the copper ions, we form iron two plus ions and copper. So the iron is being oxidized, from Fe to Fe2+, whilst the copper is being reduced by gaining electrons from Cu2 plus ions to pure copper. So it's another good example of a redox reaction taking place as well. There are some really important advantages of using phytomining over traditional mining methods. For example, traditional mining methods are depleting our supply of high-grade ores that contain copper. The great thing about phytomining is it doesn't use those ores. Instead, it uses low-grade ores or even recycles mining sites, which is going to help us to conserve our supply of those high-grade ores full of copper. As a result, it should reduce our need to even bother with open-cast mining to a larger degree in the future. If we can cut down the amount of copper we're extracting through traditional mining methods, this can only be a good thing from an environmental stance point. And of course, the plants we're growing are autotrophs. They photosynthesize to produce their own food. That photosynthesis will be uptaking carbon dioxide. Now, I'm not saying necessarily the process is carbon neutral, but certainly this must be advantageous from a stance point of reducing the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and removing that greenhouse gas from our environment. There are some disadvantages to the phytomining process, such as it is relatively energy intensive because of all the various stages involved, including growing the plants, cultivating the plants, harvesting the plants, and then obviously burning the plants, all of that adds to the energy uh, requirements of the process. Secondly, this one's more uh, obvious, it is a very slow batch process. It takes a long time for the plants to grow and therefore to accumulate the copper ions from the soil or the low-grade ores they are growing on. So these things are clearly drawbacks, current drawbacks, for the phyto mining process itself. The second technique we're going to look at is bioleaching. Now the bio is referring to living organisms, in this case microorganisms, bacteria. In this method bacteria are placed into the soil around a mining site or, or onto the low-grade copper ore itself and the bacteria actually feed on that low-grade ore to provide energy for their metabolic processes using chemical processes to break down the compounds around them. As the bacteria feed on that low-grade ore, they do produce a solution around them of copper 2 plus ions. This solution is known as a leachate. It contains lots of copper ions in that solution. And then finally, similar to the phytomining technique, we then separate out that leachate, that solution with the copper ions in it, and we add some scrap recycled iron to that solution, and the more reactive iron should displace out the less reactive copper producing pure copper as a result. It's another example of a redox or oxidation and reduction reaction. In fact, it's the same reaction as before. Similarly to phytomining, there are some really key advantages to using this method for extracting copper over the more traditional methods. It is a highly efficient extraction method for one, and secondly, it doesn't require the use of toxic chemicals to produce the leachate. Often in many mining processes, the chemicals used used to leach the key metal ions from an ore are incredibly toxic, incredibly harmful to humans. Things like mercury, for example, are used in the extraction of gold. If we can avoid using these chemicals, the better. And this one doesn't use any of those chemicals at all. However, there must be a catch. And of course, the catch this time is that this process is very slow. It can take literally years 
for the bacteria to do their work and to produce those leachates. So this is not in any stretch of the imagination going to suddenly replace our more industrially heavy processes for mining and extracting ores, but it is beginning the process of supplementing them. And who knows, in the future, these could be go-to techniques for the future extraction of metal ions from ores to try and meet our need to be a more environmentally conscious society. And I, for one, am really excited about these new-ish, new technologies and techniques becoming more mainstream. That's it. Hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Take care. Bye now.